So abortions have been legal in the United States for nearly 50 years, but that could all be changing. The US Supreme Court could be about to overturn the nationwide legal right to abortion. An early draft of a coming Supreme Court decision leaked to the public late yesterday suggests that by this summer, a majority of the justices will overturn Roe versus Wade. How many people get an abortion? It's actually not as easy to find these numbers as you would think. So the federal government through the CDC has an abortion surveillance program and they estimate that in 2019, there are around 630,000 abortions in the United States. But the thing about the federal numbers is that providers voluntarily submit data to states, which means the data set is incomplete. And the data set excludes states like California, Maryland, and New Hampshire. So the actual number is likely far higher. Other groups like the Guttmacher Institute, which is a reproductive rights research and policy organization, have created model-based approaches. And so based on their models, they put that number much higher at around 886,000 abortions per year in the United States. There is no contraceptive method that is 100% effective in preventing pregnancy. Now, there are surgical methods like vasectomies or tubal ligations, but I was actually surprised to learn that even these can have a, a fraction of a percent of a failure rate, which means that someone could still get pregnant. Then you have long acting contraceptive methods like IUDs or implants. And so those have less than a 1% chance of failure. And then you move up to things like the pill, or the patch or the ring. And those have around a 7% failure rate. And then if you depend on say just a condom, there's a 13% failure rate for that. And for withdrawal, it's even higher, 20% failure rate. When we talk about abortion, there are two different options. There's medication abortion or surgical abortion. Medication abortion is what's commonly referred to as the abortion pill, but it's actually a combination of two pills that someone needs to take. We are starting to see a rise in the number of medication abortions. So for the first time in 2020, the Guttmacher Institute estimated that medication abortions account for 54% of abortions. So this is the first time ever that that passed the 50% threshold, which is up from 39% in 2017, which is the last time that they surveyed all abortion providers in the US. The average pregnancy lasts around 40 weeks and is split into three trimesters. The vast majority of abortions occur in the first trimester. So 93% occur before 13 weeks of gestation. What's happened recently is states are passing bans at different weeks. So Texas, Oklahoma, and Idaho have all recently passed bans on abortion after six weeks. When we look at some of the polling numbers, an April Wall Street Journal poll found that 48% of U.S. adults somewhat support restricting abortion, but that's after 15 weeks of pregnancy, while 43% oppose it. For an abortion in the first trimester of pregnancy, there are two options, medication abortion or a surgical abortion, and they're both around the same costs. The median cost for a medication abortion in 2020 was around $560, and for first trimester surgical abortion was $575. If you get an abortion in the second trimester, the price goes up. So then your option is a surgical abortion, and the median cost was around $895. These are out-of-pocket costs if you don't have insurance. And to put this in context, around 12% of US households would be unable to pay a $400 emergency expense. In either case, first trimester or second trimester, an out-of-pocket abortion would be more than that. 
The other important thing to note is that the percentage of providers that are accepting insurance for abortion procedures are going down from around 89% in 2017 to 80% in 2020. When it comes to costs, it isn't just the medication or the procedure. What's increasingly happening as different states pass restrictions is people are having to travel longer and longer distances. The Bridget Alliance, which is a New York-based nonprofit that arranges travel for people seeking abortions, says the average cost is around $1,000. And so that includes transportation, hotels, childcare reimbursement, and meal stipends. We don't know for sure what will happen with the Supreme Court's opinion on Roe versus Wade until the final opinion comes out sometime in June or July of this year. But what we do know is that if abortion is kicked to the state level and there becomes this patchwork system, it just means that accessing abortion is going to become more expensive and more difficult because people are going to have to travel greater distances, and it also means that some people might not be able to access abortions at all. 